takes the three of us to put the story together because some, sometimes when we get together, every one of us might not remember something. You think your parents made the right decision in sending you to McDonald's at 19? I'm very proud of that decision. I'm very proud of that decision. Very good. I just think, wish things would have been a little better for them, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But somebody had to do it. And he said that those girls are a part of something that's bigger than we ever dreamed, imagine. ever imagined, mm -hmm. had no idea. For years, we never really talked about it, because when you try, some people feel as though you were bragging, or some people tell them, well, they know what you're talking about, but if you try to say what was going on, or what happened, or what you participated in, they say, well, I did something such and I did this, you know, so we just back off and just let them say what they did. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get them to understand that what we were talking about was something different. Mm -hmm. It was history, it was something that was done the first time, mm -hmm. you know, and we were children. I mean, we weren't like... Um, teenagers or in college, yeah. we were six years old. We mm -hmm. didn't even make the decision. You know, we were told this is what we were going to do. We were told that we would be going to McDonald's 19. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was going to a different school, but I don't think I had an idea as to what was really happening. Mm -hmm. So the first day when we arrived at school, my daddy was the one that came that came up with me the first day. And I remember him telling me to take his hand look straight ahead mm -hmm. not to be afraid because he was there i remember being picked up by the federal marshals my mom was with me that morning and um, they drove us to the school and I, it's like the police met us at a certain point to get us in because you know they just had to direct mm -hmm. the people they just didn't want to strip so um, i remember the car coming through the crowd and the car driving through the, through, crowd. through the crowd of people in the street, you know, and mm -hmm. it was, it was enormous. It was just, I, I just could, I just feel a feeling, you know, not really can express to you what type of feeling that was. Do, did you, so you were in the car with your mother On that first day, right? and the federal marshal, right. and, you, and you remember driving through the crowd. Right. Were you afraid seeing the people? No, I, I don't re ever remember being afraid. Um, I think my family did a real good job of keeping the fear away from me, if, if, even in the fact if they were, because I, I don't even remember them showing me any fear. Um, I was just amazed, you know. I, you know, I, They had me prepared that I was doing something special. I remember riding in the car looking out the window. I remember being in the car with the federal marshal. I didn't know there were federal marshals at the time. Mm -hmm. But I remember riding in the car, um, sitting behind the older guy. And they had the younger guy in the car also. And for some strange reason, I consider him my boyfriend because he was the one that was holding my hand sometimes. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and my mother and my father was there with me. And I remember the crowds of people outside in what now is the neutral ground area at the time. I didn't know what it was. To me, it was the middle of the street. And it was crowds of people hollering, making noise, jeering all kind of noises, and saying all kind of things. And I didn't know why they were reacting that way. All I, all I could think was that, for whatever reason, if they could get to me, they were, they wanted to hurt me. Because I mean, it looked, that's the way they looked to me. I guess as a six-year-old child, seeing these mobs of people screaming and hollering, and the policemen um, trying to keep them crowds back so yeah. they wouldn't get to you. So, I mean, that's all I could think. I know. What were they saying? Do you remember what they were saying? I don't remember, but, you know, over the years we're talking the test and mm -hmm. on, you know, they say they were saying two, four, six, eight, you don't want to answer it. But I mean, to me, it's just like noise. You know, I didn't even remember what they were saying. Were you afraid? Do you remember? I was terrified. You were terrified. Yeah. How did you get to school after the first day? Okay, we were taken to school by the marshals. Every day. These were the federal marshals? These were federal marshals. Mm -hmm. They would come to your house? They or? would come to our house and pick us up in the morning, and they would pick us up in the evening and bring us back home. You know, the, the marshals that picked us up in the morning and dropped us off in the evening, because each one of us had a different marshal. Oh, you had your own yeah, marshal? Yeah, we had our own marshal. Okay. So that marshal always picked us up and mm -hmm. always brought us home. Mm -hmm. 
So we never had different different marshals. Oh. Everybody had their own marshal. So he was with you every day? Every for day. For a year? For a year. For a year. And I remember, I, I, I remember how he looked, and the only name I remember, they used to call him Rooster. Rooster? Yes, and he was a redhead uh -huh. with like a crew cut. Uh -huh. And so I guess that's why they called him yeah, Rooster. Yeah, uh-huh. And, um, but they were, they, were, they were just fine with us. They were very protective. Because my mother mentioned to me not long ago that I was an only child then. Mm -hmm. And um, she was really hesitant about, you know, just turning me over to these strangers. Yeah. And he told her, he said that, that this was his job and that he would protect me with his life. And I remember being escorted into the building. <coughs> people were everywhere. You know, it seemed like a normal school day, all right? It just seemed very fast that day. Everybody was just moving about at a, a, a rate of speed that just was abnormal to me, you know? And, it, and I remember being seated on a bench, and I think we sat there for quite some time. They didn't really just put us in a classroom, okay? Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, I don't remember. I know my mother was there, but I don't remember her being with me while I was sitting on the bench. I do remember Tessie and Gail. Did you um, know them already? I knew Tessie already. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we went to Harden together. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I remember her because our families met a lot being prepared for this. So I know we were introduced at that time, but I don't know if I really remember her from going to school with her or during that time mm -hmm. of our parents meeting. Um, and it's like we sat there for quite some time. And I think we finally got, got placed in a classroom. Um, and, you, you, you know, everybody was like up and around. It wasn't like we were sitting in a desk. I mean, I, I don't remember what we were doing, but it was like everybody was just standing up doing things. And we tried to be sociable, but it was like the white children wanted to talk to you, but they couldn't. Okay. Really? Okay. So um, I don't even remember if we were all in the same classroom that day. I do, at that time, mm -hmm. I do remember the white parents removing their children from school. And I think either by the end of that day or the next day, they were totally gone. Eventually we went to the classroom, to the classroom because we were together. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember being in the classroom, but I don't remember much about that afterwards, um, talking, you know, as we talked together, mm -hmm. as we know and reflect yeah. on things that have happened. But some of that I don't really remember. Okay. They do. Okay. Um, well, do you remember your teacher? I remember my teacher was my she, had, she was an elderly lady. Well, she appeared to be an elderly lady to me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we were just six years old, and she was real nice. She was a sweet lady. She was. Yes. Um, if she was prejudiced or anything, I didn't want us there. We couldn't tell. She mm -hmm. had a job to do, and she did it. You know. Um, eventually, it ended up just being. I don't remember the kids leaving, but they did leave, and it was just Tessie Leon and I in the whole school. For you the know, whole year. You remember that, those days? Oh, yeah, I remember in those school, days. I remember, I, remember, I remember the days. I don't remember the kids leaving out of uh -huh. the classroom, but I remember the days uh -huh. going to school every day, Jesse Leon and I, and Ms. Myers, and that's what it was. We had to bring our own lunch. We couldn't eat lunch from them because they were afraid they were going to poison us. Um, the windows were covered with brown paper so they wouldn't see where we were. Because mm -hmm. we used to take in, um, at recess time and lunchtime, we would go in different classrooms to eat our lunch and that was our way of playing. Oh. You know, the teacher the other teachers were there and they didn't have any class with students, so the whole school was empty. So we would take turns going to different rooms for recess or lunch, um, I guess as a way to because we could go out in the yard. And that's what you all did. That's what we did. So what about third grade? Well that year McDonald nineteen was predominantly black. Okay. So they moved us. We moved to another white school. Who moved you? Okay. I'm not sure why we made that move, but I think it was because, I don't know, if our families wanted us to continue going to a white school or because of the movement, um, mm -hmm. but we were moved to TJ Sims. Mm -hmm. All three of you? All three of us. Mm -hmm. I think that was the worst year of my life. I guess we were so used to what had happened with us in first and second grade that we thought this was going to be the same way, and it was not. How was it different? It was the worst experience I have had in my life. Really? Yes. What happened? 
the kids did not leave. There were older kids than we were. Mm -hmm. They came to school with this mindset that their parents had instilled in them, this hatred. Mm -hmm. And they, they hated us. And there were teachers that hated us. We had not experienced that, you know, at, at McDonald's. Yeah. We didn't have that. And there were there was there were teachers that hated us, teachers that instigated fighting. Um, we were spit on. Oh, no. We were kicked. We were knocked. We were hit with bats. Whenever something would happen, we'd go home and complain, and my dad wrote, wrote notes to the principal and figured that was the correct way to do it, mm -hmm. not, not the violent way. Mm -hmm. You know, so trying to be like Martin Luther King, you see, you know, that we're not supposed to be violent. That and then he beat up his order. <laughs> yeah. That's what he did. Wrote well, his little notes, complained, called the school, went to the school board. I mean, went to the school, talked to the principal. But nothing happened. The principal didn't want to say that. Why did he say that? Because he was pregnant just like the rest of them. He, he, he treated us just like the rest of them. We were there. And there was nothing he could do about it. And mm -hmm. it was the opposite, and they didn't want to say it. How were you able to deal with all this hate from, from your white classmates? How do you feel about them now? Oh, I don't. It, it doesn't. It doesn't faze me now. I mean, I can't explain it. I, I really cannot explain it. Except to say that, um, just like I said, I was I was raised in a Christian home mm -hmm. and Christian values, and those were instilled in me at a very 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 young age, mm -hmm. and I still carry those those values. Mm -hmm. And so no, I, I I don't have, I just don't ha I don't feel that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't feel hatred toward them. I I I, I never did. I mean, I used to get, you know, when I was small, mm -hmm. it's happening to get angry, but yeah. to carry it on, no, I don't, yeah. I don't have a problem with. As, as a matter of fact, I, I, I ran into one, a girl that I had gone to Sims with, and I was at Walmart getting my, some tires on my car, and I kept looking at her, and I kept looking at her, and I said, I know you're from somewhere. And she said, um, she asked me, where did I work? And I said, no, it's a lot. It's a lot it's not something recent. I said, it's been years and years. And she said, really? She said, I said, did you go to TJ Sims? And she said, yeah. And then she looked at me and she said, Sissy. And she walked up to me, she grabbed me, she hugged me, and she kissed me. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. She said, oh, yeah, I remember you. I said, I know your face looked familiar, but I wasn't sure. I said, because I, I kept looking at her. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, well, I don't want to do yeah. anything. I'm just staring at her, you know. And so, uh, so no, I don't, I don't have that. You know, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad I, I'm glad I don't have that. Mm -hmm. It was hard to do that. They mm -hmm. took six years to decide to do that. And that's, I think that's the main thing that angers me is because they took so long after the law was passed act on it, you know, yeah. and, I, and that, for some reason that really hurts, you know, but maybe yeah. it was because of, it was for us to do it, because that the year that the law was passed was the year we were born, mm -hmm. you know, we were six years old when we mm -hmm. got selected for this. Mm -hmm. And you all were civil rights pioneers, you're probably yes, our youngest pioneer, civil rights activist, young activist. You thought about it that way. Six-year-old activist, yeah, you were, yeah, years. because you were on on the front line, <laughs> and you actually time. you actually made a, a giant step in the whole integration of the school system, which led to uh, the breaking down of a lot of separation laws. It is. Have you thought about that and how it impacted the whole country? More now we are, but like I said before, we really didn't. You know, it's like it's just happening. Yeah. Because we started to just be recognized. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's so all of a sudden it's three more. Texas Leon and Yale. You know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And Ruby Bridges, we know we've heard about her story because she's been out and she's done a book and but people forget that they were these other three girls. We were called the New Orleans Four.